Okay, I'm back working on my 2003 Ram 1500. This morning we're going to be replacing these uh, front wheel bearings on here. It's a two wheel drive. If you got a four wheel drive, it's going to be a little bit different. And I've got my new bearing ready to go. It's a hub assembly. And uh, we just have three uh, bolts you can see that are going to be holding this on. Uh, you could, you know, as far as diagnosing these, uh, you could have some growling noise, some howling noise, um, or you may not be um, getting a lot of noise, maybe getting a vibration, which you would have to, you know, shake the wheel to test that. You know, in this case, I was getting a little bit of a, you know, a growling noise going down the, the road, but I also confirmed this once I lifted the wheel up and spun this by hand I could hear the noise and I'll show you that so we're gonna go ahead and get started okay I went ahead and broke the lugs loose slightly before lifting uh, using a 7 8 in this case on these I'm gonna have to get some replacements of uh, getting a hold of it right here and we've got a couple of jack stands and also I have the rear tires chalked Okay, back behind the wheel, we got one just placed back here. We're gonna leave this in place. And I'll just put another one up here. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish removing the lugs and get the wheel off. Okay, with the wheel off, we're gonna come around to the back. We're gonna be removing this um, brake caliper and bracket. I've got something to set it on here. Uh, you can get yourself a bucket or a box or something and uh, we're going to go ahead now you'll want to take take you a screwdriver or something in here you can push back on these pistons a little bit and you'll be able to wiggle this off much easier mine's going to come off easy just because I have new pads and rotors but in yours case you'll probably want to come in here with the screwdriver and push those back a little bit to get you some slack unless you want to just pull the whole entire rotor off as one piece but um, anyways we're going to come around to the back and we've got a couple of 21 millimeters here as you can see here and down here we're going to go ahead I've got a long breaker and these are going to be extremely tight and I got a cheater pipe too we're going to go ahead and get set up on here okay you'll note how I've got it extended out here so we can get plenty of leverage and I'm up on to the upper I'm just on the upper right now and then we'll get on that lower okay now I'm just down on the lower I've got the upper broke loose the bolt still in I'm just working on this lower. I'm going to go ahead and break it loose and then I'll get my ratchet. Okay, with my ratchet, go ahead and just go ahead and start taking these loose. Make sure to get a hand on it just in case it tries to slip off on you. But I'm just working on the upper right now. And I'll get it where I can just pretty much finger tighten them out of there. Then I'll get a hand on it. I'm just going to go ahead and get on the lower one right there now. Now if you don't have one of these extended handle ratchets these are a must-have and they're very nice and I got this one from Harbor Freight but you can get these pretty much anywhere I think. It's got a nice padded handle on it so it really comes in nice. Um, I'm just going ahead and removing these got them where I can just get them out with my fingers now and you can see what a big bolt holds that bracket so I'm gonna have to get my hand on it here and we're gonna go ahead and get this top one and I'm just gonna put my bucket up here and I'm just gonna carefully set it back over here so it's not falling or anything and there we have it. Like I said, mine is, is loose because I don't have new rotors, but you, uh, what you have to do is go in these slots at the top and bottom with a flat screwdriver and push, 
push this here, put pressure and push it back and it'll push that piston back. And I've actually just pushed them completely all the way back and I didn't even use a C-clamp before doing that. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this rotor off. Uh, sometimes when they've been on a while, they can stick. So you have to put spray lubricant and where the studs are and around this just to get it to come loose. So just be mindful of that. And then you'll wanna take a, if it's stuck, take a rubber mallet and hit it here till you can get it loose. Okay, so back behind the knuckle. Now, you can get in there and turn the wheel from side to side if you want to get to each side one at a time. But if you come back here, then you're gonna have three of these bolts coming through. You can see those are gonna be 18s. So these are going to be really tight as well. So we're going to get back here again with our breaker bar and we're going to break these loose. So we've got those three. So I'm just going to be using an 18 millimeter. Uh, you don't need a long one. And I'm going to come back here. I'm going to get my breaker bar again and start taking those loose. Okay, again, got my cheater pipe breaker bar and right now I'm just up on that upper top one right there and I'm breaking it loose I'm just gonna get them broke loose just enough where I can get my ratchet in there and start taking them the rest of the way I'm just gonna move on to the others now okay now what I've done I slightly turned the wheel to to the right uh, to get to this back one over here so uh, that makes it a little easier. Like I said, it's it's definitely not easy breaking these loose. I'm using this long extension. It's taking every bit of it to get these things loose. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so I've switched over to the ratchet now. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish working these out. I'm just working on this lower one here on the far. So I'm just going to continue on. I've got them loose where I can get them with the ratchet now. And um, like I said, get a hand on it when you get them out, but I don't expect that any of these are going to fall out because usually they're stuck in there and rusted in there. And you're going to have to wound up pounding it out, but just in case, you know, be cautious. And there's the first bolt that we have removed. And you can see it's a pretty good sized bolt. Now, the only thing that makes it tricky about being able to turn it this way completely and get them all out is that if you do, you come in here, you start hitting on this part right here and it gives you kind of an awkward angle. But once you have it loose, there's no danger of stripping it so then you can turn it this way but as far as like torquing it down and um, breaking it loose is how tight it is you don't want to come in at this weird angle because you're hitting on these nubs right here and you can see how this bolt comes through here how far it comes through the front of this wheel bearing as i'm loosening it off here so when you put this back be mindful of the Loctite. I'm gonna be putting some high strength Loctite on here, but you only need to put the Loctite back about three quarters to an inch in that area that it's coming through the wheel bearing. So I'm just going ahead, finishing removing this other one. There's that one. The second one so we just got one more up on the top there to get and then we'll have all the bolts out oh and before I take this thing completely off I want to see if you could hear this because this is what I don't know if you can hear that noise
but you shouldn't be hearing that. If you can take yours loose and spin it and be hearing that scraping, then you need some bearings. It shouldn't be making any noise. It should be nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and finish taking out that top bolt there. Okay, now the next thing that I've done is just took some ordinary nail polish and put a dot here and here. Now it may seem kind of silly that you know you wouldn't forget, but just to make sure that you don't flip it around on accident, put a mark. That way you're not putting this, orienting this back on wrong and then having to take it back off. It's just easier, just as a precaution. To make sure otherwise just make sure that you leave this area right here for the brakes okay now we just got a regular hammer um, I'm not worried about damaging these because they're obviously bad um, if you were having to remove it for some reason other than to change them then you know you'd want to use like a shot filled mallet but we're just going to be hitting it here until we knock it out of here. It's going to be stuck pretty good and you'll want to also get a hand once you get it loose. But it's going to take some pretty good hits to get it completely loose. See it's breaking. It's breaking there. Okay, just been hitting on it and you can see we almost got it but it's sticking in there. So we're just going to get a hand on it, continue hitting it, get it completely out. Okay, and there we are, it's ready to come out and this shroud will fall down as well if you don't grab it. So, there it is. And you can see all the, all the rust and the grime that gets in behind this. And what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to start out with a, with a putty knife here, just cleaning this up. Okay, so we got to get in here and get all this rust and uh, whatever that's caked up in here. And it's going to be, all this got to come out. And it's just, it's caked up pretty thick, kind of like glue. But I'm just using this kind of flat side to scrape it down. We're not getting into the aluminum. We're just scraping the all the dirt and sediment that's in here. And once we get it top and bottom, then we'll finish up. You can either use a little a uh, wire brush or some sandpaper and you, you really wouldn't need to even go to that extent this usually is enough to get it because the other part will slip in there this is just to locate it it's not like a pressed in fit or anything so I'm just going to continue on with this and it will take a wire brush to it Okay, I just uh, cleaned this up with my wire brush. <clears throat> it's a little handheld. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to get more debris in there. You can see how rough the surface is anyways. It's just to locate it and center it up. And I took just a light bit of fine sandpaper, uh, some 120, just kind of lightly knock down any rough edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now one thing I just thought about, uh, mine on this are non-ABS, so if you have ABS, you'll know it. You'll have a wire connector that's coming down into the back there. You know, you want to look at that before you order or go get your bearings. They're going to want to know um, if it's ABS or not. So if it's ABS, you're going to have a wire to connect into the back. These are non-ABS. So we've got it. Uh, we're just going to get it up into here we've got to get our backing plate here and we're going to orient it said we got the dot so there's no chance of making any error 
and putting it the wrong way or flipping it around the wrong way or anything else because we got a dot there. So now we're going to hold that there and when we're holding that we're going to feed this back up into place. No special orientation. Okay, so we got it held there. Now what you'll want to do is make sure to get your Loctite onto your bolt before you go to to getting it all together. I'm going to get a bolt up in the top here just to hold it and then I'm going to work on getting the Loctite on the others. But I'm just holding it here in place and as I come through the back I'm going to watch to make sure my bolt comes through that shroud, doesn't hang up, and goes into the front of my bearing here. Okay, I'm using the high strength and you'll notice the location of the Loctite. The rusted part is coming completely through and right where I've got the red, that's where you're going to want the Loctite. It's back about three quarters of an inch or so, I guess. Now, as you're getting your second bolt started, you'll have to turn this slightly and look to make sure that you get it lined up with the hole and the shroud. Once you get the second one lined up, the third one will be no problem. Okay, and you can note uh, where I showed you about where the Loctite was going to be. You can note how far that the threads are coming through there. As I'm just snugging this in, I'm just going to snug them up a little bit. And then we'll come back with our torque wrench here in just a second. But you can see how far the bolt actually protrudes there. And it's not, not a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these down and we'll get our torque wrench over here. Okay, so we got the torque wrench on this lower one here. And we've got it set to 120 foot-pounds. We're going to go through and torque them. And uh, we'll double check them. Okay, so I torqued the top and that one. Now, you notice because of the angle, we don't want to mess our bolt up, so I'm going to have to turn the wheel back so I can get clearance to get in here without hitting on these, these nubs right here. And then I'll get the 120 foot pounds on that, and I'll just double check these others. Okay, and you can see with this straightened out, I have the proper clearance to get on that. And I have torqued this to 120, and we went ahead and double checked these others here. Okay, and now the great thing about this, we turn it, it's nice and smooth, and no noise, just like it should be. Now make sure to clean up all of your mating surfaces that you don't have any debris or anything stuck on there you get your rotor back on okay we just slid the rotor right back on we're gonna go ahead and put a lug right here just to kind of help hold it from flopping around okay now we're just gonna lift our rotor our, our caliper up here carefully and we're gonna get it set right back on here and it's pretty heavy but it should just slip right back on into place here Okay, so I've just kind of set it on the top and slid it down. I've got one bolt at the bottom just holding it, just barely holding it. And I'm fixing to put the top bolt in here. Now, because this is something I remove more often, we're going to be using some blue Loctite on these bolts. And we're going to be torquing these down. I've got my torque wrench set to uh, 130 foot-pounds. And we're going to be using the 21 millimeter to torque those down with. So I'm going to go ahead and get some Loctite on here and get the top bolt there in place. Okay, we're going ahead and just snug in this top one. And then we'll get the Loctite on the lower. And just kind of watch as you're putting the bolt in to make sure you get it lined up properly. You may have to wiggle it around. Don't get it real tight, just get the top one snugged up a little bit and then get your bottom one lined back up. Okay, so now we're going to snug up the bottom. Now I like to get these started at least a little bit even though they're big bolts by hand just to make sure you don't run the risk of messing any threads up. So we're just going to snug these down we'll get the torque wrench on it. 
Okay, so we just got the uh, lower and the upper torque to 130 foot pounds. Okay, and with that, we're ready to go ahead and uh, get our wheel back on here now. Okay, so with our lugs, we'll go ahead and tighten these to 130 foot pounds. Right now, we can go ahead and remove our jack stand from the front and back here. Okay, so we just got our jack removed and our chocks from behind the wheel and ready to go ahead and take this down the road and test it out. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. As always, I invite you to subscribe and I thank you for watching.